Uh, today I'm going to show you a example of a functional MRI in practical use. Um, this is a patient, a 40-some year old uh, male that had a uh, probably a low-grade tumor of the brain. Uh, this person, this is the MRI that the patient is facing us. This is the uh, this his eye, the left eye, the right eye looking at us. He has a um, lesion in the uh, inferior aspect of the temporal lobe uh, that it does not contrast enhances. We, we suspect it's a, a, a low-grade tumor. And that the neurosurgeon want to find out the uh, whether this lesion uh, is destroying or displacing the uh, Wernicke's area. The Wernicke's area is in, is in control of the generation of uh, understanding of speech and uh, uh, the first part of a generating a speech. Uh, so most people are left-handed, uh, I'm sorry, most hand people are right-handed, even the left-handed people are 50 percent are left hemisphere dominant. So the, anyway, the more than 90 percent are left hemisphere dominant for speech. Therefore, the patient's left side tumor uh, is not good for speech. So the neurosurgeon want to find out whether uh, the speech uh, function might be affected from his surgery. So basically he ordered MRI, we did the MRI, traditional MRI, coronal T2 images like this. And uh, what I'm showing you on the right side is called a diffusion tensor imaging, DTI, uh, or another name is called white matter tractography. What you see, the color that's superimposed, uh, basically fused onto this uh, T2 picture are the uh, colored, for example, uh, the red color here is going left or left to right, means the white matter fiber track is going left to right. The uh, blues are front and back, the greens are uh, up and down. Uh, anyway, I, I selected um, the area uh, that I that later know this is area of interest, and then I select that area and then ask computer to generating uh, the white fi white matter fibers that extend basically follow the area of interest, where do they go? Because I know this area of the cortex is the uh, speech, the Wernicke's area, and then I can w find out where are the white, fiber, white matter fiber track leading from that area to the rest of the brain. For example, this area, uh, this um, the purple area is going from this cortex, uh, the temporal cortex to the frontal, and there are other fiber tracks that go front to front to back. This two dot, you have to look carefully. That's going to the front end of the temporal lobe. Uh, so basically, literally, the brain is wired, and this is the wiring for the brain, uh, for that little part of the cortex. Of course, there's other part of the cortex, a lot of more a mingle of the wires. Uh, I'm just localizing this little part. Um, why I know this area is important? Uh, I think uh, one from the uh, functional MRI. Now I'm introducing a functional MRI uh, concept. Basically, we're asking the patient to think and do some task. Uh, and by asking the patient to uh, to do something, to think something, a different part of the brain get more blood flow. For example, this patient we told him to look at the outside through the mirror uh, and then generate some um, words from uh, for uh, at what you have seen, um, the that is very good at um, the um, occipital region. For example, his l l visual cortex uh, have a lot of uh, blood flow, so we show the white uh, yellow signal, and then this is a tumor, and then we can see the uh, Wernicke's area is lighting up, uh, but it's covered by our tractography. We should have removed this purple color, otherwise uh, you will see it better. Anyway. Um, this is the uh, this is axial view of the fr front, back, left, right, face forward, face upward. This is the coronal view looking at us. The tumor, the uh, uh, the 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 yellow colored are the uh, activation center. Means the blood flow tend to fly uh, flow to that area more. It means the brain uh, the person is using that area. That's a Wernicke's area, and uh, we can uh, select that. Uh, by um, by use computer uh, technique uh, and grow the fi uh, grow the fibers so we can see where they goes. 
uh, and also uh, secondarily uh, that location is in the posterior aspect of the uh, uh, superior temporal gyrus. Therefore, that's a secondary verification of Wernicke's area from anatomy. So this is a, another uh, sign of this is an area of concern. So we know um, that the lesion is somewhere here, and uh, <coughs> it is about one centimeter away from the tumor. So therefore, there is a plane, and there is a cutting plane for the surgeon to cut it out without effect, probably without affecting the um, speech area and safely remove this tumor. So that's, this is the um, information we got from the functional MRI and tractography, and therefore make the, patient, uh, make the surgeon more confident in removing the tumor, not too much, uh, not too much, not too little, because if you remove too much, um, you will affect the uh, patient's speech. If you remove too little, then the residual tumor may grow back and become a bad tumor, a, a high-grade tumor. So we want to uh, make a good map so the surgeon will do a good job. Um, this is one example, and then uh, I can show you another example, uh, which is uh, another patient's uh, 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 functional MRI. If I can get this thing works. Uh, never mind, I c could not get the other picture uh, on the screen. So, anyway, this is one example. Thank you.